Hello, in this video, we will be attempting to critically analyze the language and symbolism used in S. Vajaratnam's short story, The Tiger. In this video, Ivano, Marcus, Caleb and I, Gabriel, will be going through many ex different aspects of The Tiger in order to fully al analyze this deep story. These aspects include the background of the author, the story's context, genre, themes, plot and setting, its viewpoint and characterization. For example, the roles the characters play, the significance behind the story, and the development of the characters in the story. Lastly, we will go through the literary devices and effects before doing an overall conclusion and final analysis of the story. Well, without further ado, let's get straight into the analysis. As said earlier, this story was written by Sinatambi Rajaratnam. Rajaratnam is widely known in Singapore for being one of its first leaders. He co-founded the People's Action Party, the political party that has been governing Singapore since 1959 and was appointed Deputy Prime Minister of Singapore in 1980. He remained in cabinet for another five years. The Tiger was a short story written by him around 1937 to 1948. It's not known exactly when he wrote his story. During that time, Raja Ratnam was in his early 20s. He was studying law in King's College, London. When World War II erupted, his family could not send him money for his education. As such, Rajaratnam decided to start being a journalist to fund his own education, and thus began to write short stories. The Tiger was one of them. Rajaratnam wrote this story during a time when racial discrimination was still prevalent in the world. Moving on to the genre, this story is classified as a fable, a short story, and counted as early Singapore literature. Swinging off to the themes, the themes for this story include fear, ignorance, social hierarchy, racism, and inequality. The choice for these themes will be explained later in the video. Now, I will talk about the plot and the setting. The tiger is set in a Malay village near a river located in the jungle. This village assist is assumed to be in Singapore, as it was where Rajaratnam grew up in. For the plot, the story basically talks about a pregnant woman who comes face to face with a tiger. However, the tiger does not attack her. She lives to tell the tale, returns to the village and tells her story, prompting a group of men to hunt down the tiger despite her telling them not to harm it. The hunters kill the tiger but realized that it was also pregnant with cubs and had just given birth. The, tigers, the, the hunters decide to sell the cubs at a high price while Fatima goes into labor. Now, let us move on to the analysis of characters. In the story, uh, the story is mainly, is mainly told from Fatima's point of view. Even though the story is told from a third person's perspective, we are still able to catch a glimpse into Fatima's mind. As such, we are able to scrutinize her opinions on the situation. This plays a huge part in her characterization as well. Fatima, although fearful of the tiger, has no intent of killing the tiger. Having been up close and personal with the tiger, she realizes that it did not mean to kill her and was simply bored. Throughout the story, she seems to be the only individual opposed to slaughtering the tiger. Overall, she is characterized as a peaceful person who does not want any lies, human or animal, to be destroyed or taken advantage of for no feasible rhyme or reason. Other characters provide different viewpoints, such as Fatima's mother, Mahmood, the hunter, and the village chief. Let us move on to the analysis of Fatima's mother. Fatima's mother hears her daughter's story about her encounter with the tiger and thus tells the village head. However, she views the situation as even more dire than it actually is and thus recounts the events as such. Fatima's mother exaggerated the story of Fatima meeting the tiger, 
such that the villagers would think that the tiger was a fearsome animal that had almost killed her, even though it had done none of the sort. In fact, it had done completely the opposite, leaving her alone. She is portrayed to be an attention-seeking person whose every, whose every action is loud and provocative. By exaggerating the story of her daughter's encounter with the tiger, serves as a catalyst for the events to come. She may also be a metaphor, playing the role of the fear of the unknown, caused by different racial backgrounds and cultures. Just like how someone may see one with a different racial background a threat, because do it, they do not know anything about them and are thus scared of what they might do. Racial stereotypes are thus made based on these fears, and these fears are also ex exaggerated to a comically large extent, mirroring the actions taken by Fatima's mother. Thank you, Gabriel. The next character is Mahmoud. Mahmoud listens to Fatima's story, but seems distracted, fingering his own gun. It seems that he does not care much about keeping the village safe than he does about shooting his new gun and killing the tiger. Mahmoud is a villager who is portrayed to be a bloodthirsty person who loved hunting. In the story, his intention to slay the tiger seemed to be for personal bloodlust. He said that the villagers would be afraid to leave their houses if the tiger continued to prowl, and that it was the responsibility of men to protect the others. However, the paragraph was phrased in a way such that it was more apparent to that Mahmud just wanted to fire his new gun and kill something, in this case, the tiger, and that to him, protecting the villagers came second. At first, Mahmud may seem like the hero of the story, but he seems to be more portrayed as the antagonist of the story, killing the tiger out of his own selfish ones and selling the tiger cubs just to make a quick buck, seeming to feel no remorse in his actions at all. He can also be seen as a metaphor to portray the darkness in one's heart. All humans have a deep desire to do what society says is wrong, which most people are able to suppress this desire, which is what psychoanalyst Kao Zhang calls the shadow, the part of a human's personality that is irrational and instinctive. This could be portrayed in Mahmud's thirst for blood and remorseless attitude. Mahmud could also represent the aggressive people in this taste of another race. History has shown time and time again how people may be aggressive towards races that they are prejudiced against. According to the theme of the humans being one race and the tiger of being a representative of another, Mahmud may be an embodiment of this aggression or a symbol to show what someone could become if the shadow is not suppressed. Mahmud, on the other hand, is a villager who listens to the to Fatima's story but seems to be distracted by his gun. He is portrayed as someone who cared more about fulfilling his bloodlust for hunting rather than protecting the villagers. Although he appears to to the others that he cares more about the latter. The last character is the village chief. In the story, after listening to Fatima's story, he was not inclined to kill the tiger. However, after Fatima's mother continued to exaggerate the situation, he decided to order for the execution of the tiger for the sake of the villagers' safety. The chief is portrayed to have the best interests of villagers at heart. But he was influenced by Fatima's mother to believe that the tiger was a dangerous creature. Despite being one of the lesser prominent creature characters in the story, he represents the conventional human. We humans tend to believe whatever we hear from others without questioning the facts. As such, we tend to develop incorrect preconceptions of other races based on what our family or friends tells us. 
Because of this, we might develop fear or animosity towards these races, which might lead to pointless conflicts. Although Fatima is a villager, she shares the most similarities with the tiger. They are both mothers who bear no ill will towards each other. The villagers felt animosity towards the tiger simply for being an unknown threat. But Fatima did not share that feeling. Her role in the story is to represent the people who believe that those of other races do not be mean any harm. They attempt to understand these people and constantly try to convince others to do so as well, but their voices are always being drowned out by the aggressive and prejudiced majority. The antithesis of her role are Mahmoud's and Fatima's mother's roles. Mahmoud's role in the story is to represent the people who simply want to exploit of other races for their own benefit. In the story, Mahmoud not only killed the tiger just to fulfill his bloodlust, he also decided to sell its cubs for a good price. He is similar to nature to real life human traffickers. Meanwhile, Fatima's mother's role in the story is to embody people who spread false information based on baseless accusations. These people spread fear of the unknown and as such, many people form incorrect impressions of the other, other race which later accumulate and evolve into stereotypes. These people are the root of racism and these people are the individuals that start discrimination against the other innocent races. Thanks. There are many literary devices used throughout the story in order to keep the reader captivated. These literary devices include simile, personification, metaphor, onomatopoeia, and hyperbole. There are also instances of alliteration, but they are rather accidental. Rajaratnam specifically used more similes in order to allow the reader to be able to relate to what the characters are experiencing or to imagine how the setting looks like. There are many examples of similes in this video. This is evident in almost every page. In page 2, Rajaratnam described the tiger with yellow fangs look like tree stumps. This simile was used in order to strike fear into the reader by describing the tiger as a menacing beast. Another instance where a simile was used to visualize the setting was in page 4. The woman clucking like hens at the sight of a wheeling hawk. This was after Fatima's mother spread an exaggerated version of the story Fatima had told her. It was a moment of panic and fear among the women and children, enabling the reader to visualize that scene where the tiger struck fear into the village. Rajaratnam also used similes to express the character's feelings. In page 6, Mahmud was extremely confident in killing the tiger and said, As surely as I am the son of my mother, I shall drag home the carcass of the beast before sunrise, if you will help me. This also helped rally the men in the village to support him in killing the tiger by assuring them that the tiger would be killed. Similes were also used to help the reader visualize the setting, especially in pages 7 and 8. The moon cast a mellow radiance over everything it touched and she could see the moon, broken like molten silver, through the rustling of coconut fronds. And, there was an unearthly silence over the village, as though enveloped in a funeral shroud. These similes create an image in the reader's mind of how it is like at night, in a kampung village. There are other similes that are falls under the above-mentioned categories such as, think of these men groping for a beast as cunning as a hundred foxes on the eighth page. Or, no wonder the beast fought like one possessed on the eleventh page. 
Another simile is the sweat glistened like yellow pearls on her forehead on the 11th page. However, these similes are not the only literary devices used. There are other devices such as personification as seen in page 3, dusk which had crept over from the hills, and hyperbole. The poor creatures will never move an inch out of their houses until they know that the tiger is dead on the sixth page. The hidden meaning behind this story is racial discrimination. In the story, though the tiger looked dangerous, in actual fact, it did not intend to harm or kill anyone. The villagers, however, wanted to kill the tiger for different reasons. Those, like Mahmud, simply wanted to kill it for personal bloodlust, while those, like the village chief, simply wanted to protect their village folk. Nevertheless, though the tiger did not explicitly attack anybody and was innocent, it was still shot dead at the end. Without even contemplating the tiger's actions and intentions, they went ahead to kill the tiger, as it is stereotypically viewed as dangerous. This mirrors the fear different races have of each other because of racial stereotyping and ignorance of their culture and are thus attacked. The author, S. Rajaratnam, strongly believed in multiracialism and harmony in Singapore and writing how the tiger was completely misunderstood may be a metaphor of how the different races in Singapore were strongly in distaste of each other, even though neither meant any harm. Furthermore, the tiger and Fatima share a similarity. They are both parents. Fatima and the tiger also share the same way of open thinking. Despite their similarities, their different species results in them being treated differently. The tiger is still treated harshly, although Fatima and the tiger are relatively passive and do not want to hurt anyone. Continuing on the theme of racism, this may be a metaphor to how through the viewpoints of the different races, their own race will be seen as civilized and human while other races may be seen as a threat, and in some cases, as something adverse to being human. These could be representing the state of racial discrimination in Singapore during the time span in which Singapore was under colonial rule. Moreover, at the end, Fatima gives birth to a baby. This signifies Fatima being able to spread her way of thinking, possibly resulting in the villagers and animals having a better understanding of each other. Similar to how Singapore is racially harmonious as we are taught from a young age to understand each, other, each other's races, cultures, traditions and practices. In a nutshell, the tiger is a very deep and thought-provoking story, short story on racism. It makes people question the issue of racial stereotyping and discrimination. The characters in the story all play a unique and specific role to the story to bring meaning to the story. For example, Fatima acts as the link or bridge between the tiger and villagers. Her mother also acts as the catalyst of events to come. The author also used a variety of literary devices in order to convey meaning as well as bring richness and clarity to the story. The tiger enables readers to understand that racial harmony is vital for a community's survival and development and makes readers reflect on how they should act to people of different races and cultural backgrounds. This brings us to the end of this analysis.